Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. I think everybody's favorite show. It seems like within our group on Drinking Bros, which is a private group on Facebook, 110,000 members, 800 subgroups, clips of the show have been posted over and over and over again is Letter Kenny. Yeah. One of their favorite characters is Squirrely Dan. Welcome to the show, sir. We greatly appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for having me. And it's K. Trevor Wilson, by the way, in real life. It is indeed. Obviously. <laughs> I, I, you put a period after K, though, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, it's my transplanted middle name. Mm. It is. Okay. Are we not allowed yeah. to talk about it? No, it, uh, I've talked about it before. It's a pretty simple story. When I joined the union, there was another Trevor Wilson. So mm. they requested that I come up with a stage name. And I went back and forth with my agent on some ideas. And she was like, you know, there's not a lot of front end initials. There's a lot of, you know, at the time there's, you know, Michael J. Fox, a lot of middle initials. Yeah. But uh, not a lot of front end. So she was like, why don't you take the K, throw it out front, see how it works. And uh, it accidentally turned out to be a... <coughs> smart marketing tool because i'm the only k trevor wilson on the internet yeah it, it actually is speaking of michael j fox you know it's not j right it was another initial a. he threw the j in there it's yeah a. yeah the, the the j was a nod to his favorite actor had a j mm. initial. yeah wait who was his favorite actor uh i can't remember it was in his it was in his bi autobiography probably uh james Kahn. now his autobiography uh, he didn't write that by hand did he <laughs> Probably <it>. dictated. <laughs> dictated, but not yeah. not, uh, yeah. <laughs> not not written. Um, or you know, obviously had a probably a ghostwriter for oh, something boy. like that. Um, the success of this show has been crazy. Like to to me, like the last massive show out of Canada that I can I, I feel like has been on this level was probably uh, Trailer Park mm. Boys. Um, I'm sure you guys get a lot of that, but um, man, this show is fucking everywhere right now. It's kind of nuts because, like, you know, obviously not a lot of Canadian shows end up translating down in the States. Uh, and then we were not even on a proper channel. Like, we were the first completely streaming Canadian show. So it was a full on experiment whether it would work up here. And uh, we did have like the built in audience from the original web series. So going into it, we already had a couple people that were excited that it was going to, uh, you know, happen. But uh, still, for the most part, most people didn't know about us. And then it just took off like gangbusters. Uh, actually, one of the big things that uh, helped move it was uh, the military. Um, I found out uh, a few years ago, Nathan and I did a show for about 5,000 allied troops after a three month training exercise. And uh, we found out talking to the soldiers there that letter Kenny had been included in like the homesickness packages for the Canadian troops overseas. Oh, wow. So uh, they'd get, you know, episodes sent to them on like USB sticks and they'd watch them. Uh, and then what would end up happening is they're stationed with guys from other countries. So when they watch all the shows they have, they like trade uh, memory cards with the other, uh, platoons like swapping so jerseys British shows and uh huh. so I was, I was like we were passed around like uh it was like japanese wrestling in the early 90s it was just tape trading people were handing off uh episodes of letter kenny and so uh soldiers would then bring the show home and look us up on the internet and uh, huh. that was one of the ways that we started to spread in the early days that's really funny because uh so i was in the 82nd airborne in the in u.s army and um Right before I got out, I was the rear detachment commander because our people deployed down to Haiti after the earthquake to help them get that shit sorted out. And all the new people that came in, I had to get them trained up so they could deploy with these guys. And the first thing I did was make them watch the first seven seasons of uh, Trailer Park Boys. That was the first thing they had to do when they got to the unit. So, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like, people, military people love fucked up humor. Not that your guys' stuff is super dark or anything. It, it has dark moments, but it's just so crazy. And it's it's... It, it lends itself, just the, the style of writing you guys do lends itself to meme and parody, which is great for modern media, right? Yeah. Like, if you, if you do stuff that's shareable, you're going to fucking blow up if it's funny. Shareable clips, um, because your clips have been shared so many times that it was just like, all right, cool. It was, it was yeah. finally, you know, 
buried in my feed every single day. And I was just <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to watch this show. Because I, I started with uh, the YouTube version of it. Um, obviously, you guys moved yep. on to Crave, which I, I believe is your like Canadian streaming service up there. Yeah, uh, Crave is uh, owned by one of our giant uh, media conglomerates, Bell Media, up in uh, Canada. And uh, they sort of, uh, everything that you guys have on Hulu down mm -hmm. there is kind of on, on Crave up here. Yeah, and, and so uh, I believe you guys are on like, uh, geez, like season six or seven or something like that. I mean, it's, it's crazy how many uh, are it's, on there it's total. It's weird because it's like how we're, contracted uh versus how they air them so it's like we'll do two three seasons in a year we'll do like these like seven or six episode blocks mm -hmm. and generally we shot about two or three of those a year but then they get released as separate seasons so uh the one that we just released is being billed as season nine but in my contract it's season five part two <laughs> <laughs> they gotta they gotta keep those numbers down on how much you're how much you're paying the actors well i mean it still goes into syndication after a number of i think it's what is it 88 episodes now instead of 100 it does but it's all changed now because of streaming because because uh, a lot of these streaming services want to own them for life mm -hmm. um this just happened with the office recently because i i feel like your show is very similar in in the office where fans watch them over and over and over again like eight times a piece and they never get sick of them they just leave it going in the background that's exactly what, what happened in the office down here in the united states finally nbc universal was just like hey man instead of selling this to netflix why don't we just create our own app and then run it off of there so everybody's gonna do it we're making all the money right? correct like it's only a matter of time right before the nfl does the same thing you gotta you gotta imagine they're gonna do that because that's where yes. their real value is and yeah. they're they're actually i was listening i was watching espn this morning they're gonna take a huge salary cap hit this year because of covid and fan, no fans and shit like yeah. that so all these guys that are free agents right now are fucked yeah uh but i i, I feel like you you said this a number of times it seems like Anybody that's got a valuable product that'll draw eyeballs should be looking to make their own shit yeah. right now. Uh, and the other, the other part of this is comedy. There isn't a lot of comedy being made in Hollywood right now. So a show like Letterkenny, even though it's Canadian, resonates here because we don't have any comedy here. Like we're starving for comedic shows that, <laughs> that are original, dead serious, that have any form of edge to it. And everybody, like literally, because you were talking about the military audience earlier, 80% of our audience is military and first responder everybody is watching your shows over and over and over again because there's nothing left down here. Um, you know, everything is very, very PC down in the United States, comedy-wise. Uh, comedic films are absolutely dead. So therefore, when a show like yours comes around during a time like this, especially during COVID, man, you just want to sit and laugh and watch something. Um, you're kind of all we have down here in America, <laughs> which seems strange to say. We'll take it. Yeah. We'll take it. <laughs> now, you said you guys uh, you guys started out on a web series. You mean you were just publishing on YouTube at first, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I wasn't a part of the original web stuff. Uh, mm. Jared, who plays Wayne, he, he created the concept. <laughs> and in, like, in its original form, uh, in its like, you know, baby form, Letterkenny was, started off as a Twitter page. It was uh, a Twitter page. All this problems uh, based on, on a list on Ontario. And him and his buddy... We just like write off these like ridiculous things that uh, that would happen to their hometown or that they thought mm. might happen in the hometown. Yeah, yeah, uh, Eddie, you guys that's, hear me? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah it, it's you know with COVID and all this stuff like zooming people, it's hit and miss. So I, you're good now, but. Um, yeah, it's again. The, the, my, my headphones uh, cut out for a second there. Uh, no worries. We no still worries. It's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's again. It's one of those but shows that started off. Yeah, that, that started off sorry, on YouTube. Started, you weren't a part of that, and then when the new season kicked in, you were hired, and you were. I, I believe you were actually you were replacing somebody else that was originally cast, right? Yeah. So uh, Dan Petronevich, who plays McMurray on the show. Uh -huh. uh, Twirly Dan was written for him. Mm. Dan was written for Dan. And uh, he he had a couple things happen uh, uh, that prevented him from doing it. He had some other job offers, and I think he had some like personal stuff he was dealing with at the time. So he couldn't commit to the, the role. So they brought me in. Uh, I had uh, the next guy to get network approval. 
And I knew the producers from uh, uh, New Metric Media. They'd approached me years before about uh, adapting my stand-up to uh, a sitcom. So while we were working on that, they were like, why don't you audition for this other thing that we're developing? And uh, it worked out. And then they created the role of McMurray for Dan to step into, which uh, he's just been awesome at. Uh, the McMurrays are two of my favorite characters. And uh, yeah, it just uh, it worked out that way. But it uh, man, people did not like me right away. I remember the first, like when we were leaning into the crossover from YouTube, to uh, the series, they put out a teaser of a like the straight to camera classic Letterkenny problems from the videos from the from YouTube, and the first reaction to the third hit was anything but favorable. Really? <laughs> were you getting a lot of fucking hate mail and shit? It was just like all the comments on the YouTube were like, "Who is this oh. guy? Like, Screw this guy! Why are you messing with a good thing? Why bring in this fucking idiot?" And, yeah, I, look, dude, people are resistant to change. I mean, I'll, I'll relate it to The Office. I remember when they brought Andy on. Um, <coughs> damn it, I forget the actor's name. Ed Helms. Ed Helms, yeah. who played him. I, I originally was like, man, this guy doesn't fucking fit in this show. I know who Ed Helms is. And then a little by little, dude, his character was great, and I began to love it. And, and I think that's what happened you know, to you on yours. Um, now you've become a fan favorite on that show. Yeah, no, luckily they warmed up to me. Otherwise, it would have been weird doing nine seasons being hated. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> That'd be a bold move, like, the mo just keep the most hated. Like, everybody hates this guy. Fuck them. Fuck the fans, man. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. But, you know, the way – I can't imagine uh, McMurray saying butthole, to be honest, uh, or the interaction I mean, between you and, uh, and, and Katie. I, I, I just – I don't know if that would be a thing with him. The, so the, it worked the out. The plural thing was something I brought to the, the character. Yeah. Uh, when we were, when we were, you know, sort of doing the, the early read throughs, I wanted to do something, uh, different from what Jared and, and Nate were already doing with their characters. And I'd spent enough time doing stand up in small towns that I'd met about 500 guys who, uh, all put S's where they're not supposed to be. And, uh, there was something my buddy and I did when we were driving between gigs is we'd, we'd, you know, we'd do our impressions of the guys we met in the small towns. And one thing that was constant was uh guys putting s's where they shouldn't be and guys just completely messing up uh traditional phrases uh, my buddy ryan denis he'll still message me up when he hears something ridiculous he'll be like oh i was at a small town funeral and there was a guy going down the line saying sorry for your lost mm -hmm. and we'll just that's dial. awesome oh, and boy. uh so that's where that came from and i started doing that in the read throughs and jared's like i really dig that uh that's kind of what i wanted you to do but i didn't know how to write it so keep doing that and then now that's just one of the staples now like the first few seasons I'd, I'd open the script and i'd have to figure out where the s's were going and now like the writers come in and they're just they're, awesome. they're writing the, the the broken phrases right and they're writing the plurals for me and they figured it out it's a lot of fun now i think a lot of people who uh before the last i don't know year or two maybe maybe the last two years uh, as the show's really blown up first got introduced to your character in a certain scene where you guys were throwing a baseball around outside of uh, your house. Uh, now, I would have loved to have been in the writer's room for that, just because I know there's no way that you guys could have written that without laughing the entire time. Um, it, it's that, that scene is fucking ridiculous. Have you seen that? You know, was, yeah. Jared and Jacob were, were the, 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 like, for the first few seasons, they were, they were the entire writing team. So I know that came from a, a jam session between uh, Jacob and uh, Tierney, who uh, plays Glenn and also directs all the episodes, and uh, and Kiso, and uh, I, I, I was full on a Jared thing. It was an excuse to get us all to bring our mitts to Sudbury. Uh, I still remember him <coughs> sending me a text a couple months before we go. And he was like, "I wrote a, a scene where we're playing catch, so uh, get your ball glove out of the garage, and start practicing." And uh, when when we filmed that scene, that was like. Because uh, Jared and Nate, they've been friends for years, and nothing makes uh, them laugh harder than seeing the other one break in a scene. Mm. Like, if Jared starts laughing, we're going to lose Nate and vice versa. And so that whole scene was just that, like, when we were shooting my coverage, they both had their backs to each other because they couldn't look at each other in the face. 
without corpse in the scene. And uh, we had a lot of giggle shooting that one. I think the, the true sign is that if the scene's good is if we make the cameraman laugh so hard that he, he shakes the camera and scraps the whole tape. So I, think, <laughs> I think we might've had a camera shake. On wow. That. If you're, if you're making the camera guy shake, people. that's, that's, that's good comedy. It's right rare. There. Yeah, Cause really usually good. the crew hates you and they're yeah. just like, dude, just finish your job. You fucking, that's idiot. why you don't so hire fans, home. by the way, yeah. if you hire fans, they're just going to sit there and laugh the whole time, laugh the entire time. Yeah. Speaking of the writer's room, I watch a show like yours and I am stunned at how much dialogue you guys have to read in, in such a short amount of time back and forth. I, I would imagine um, being a Hollywood guy that that's, there's not a lot of room for improv. Most of that stuff is probably written. And if you guys fuck it up, one of the actors is going to get pissed at the other because it's just like, dude, we just read off like 8 million lines of dialogue and now you're going to fuck up this scene at the end? We... Uh... I mean, we, we run the scenes pretty solid. We'll do about like six, you know, run throughs before we even tried in front of camera. And I mean, the hockey boys, especially the hockey mm, boys will yeah. rehearse scenes for days because their dialogue is so rapid yeah. fire. And uh, I mean, the lucky thing is that we are, you know, it, it's not like they're really complicated shots to reset. Like if we right. screw up, it's an easy fix. It's, you know, drag the camera back to one and go again. We're, sitting outdoors on a beautiful day we'll take our time um but yeah it's it's a lot of it's a lot of verbal gymnastics and uh it can be i, I there's a, a blooper reel somewhere of, of hersey uh messing up the name saku koivu they kept calling him seku and uh <laughs> it's like it'll be like we'll get everything right but like one word will keep tripping up an actor uh but yeah no it's it's a lot of practice and like, you know, they let us play, they let us have fun, but we at least got to do two solid takes of it the right way before we get to screw around. I bet dude, I, I, I'm amazed. Like watching it, like I get anxiety, like, you know, as an actor watching that going, oh my God, if I had to memorize that much dialogue, I would lose my fucking mind. Um, because again, the pressure of it, if the, the beauty of Letterkenny is the timing is there, right? So if you don't have that quick dialogue and somebody's not immediately jumping your line to get to the next one, that's the beauty of, of your show that makes it so different than everything else that you see on television today. However, if somebody fucks that up, my God, man, you've got to go through all of that again. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll shoot things in, uh, in blocks to help ourselves too. It's like, okay, get through these these eight lines and then uh, we'll uh, we'll move on to the next eight lines <laughs> yeah 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 I, that makes we'll sense the trade to shoot around ourselves <laughs> i figured um something you said earlier dan mm -hmm. about the butts hole thing yeah uh now i follow you on twitter actually um and last night ironically because i you know we knew you were coming on the show today and we were going to do this interview you put out a statement on Twitter last night uh, about the butts hole. And if I'll read it to the audience, because if it's happening that much to you, um, that's pretty fucking crazy. So I'll, I'll just read it verbatim here. It says, I can't believe I have to say this again. I am done with jokes towards myself and especially my fiance about butt stuff. Or does she pay, pay attention to your butts holes? Uh, this is disrespectful to us both and will not be tolerated. If you make these jokes, you will get blocked. Are you hearing it that much that you've got to release a statement? Because this already has 2,000 likes, and I caught this last yeah. night in real time. Yeah, no, it's it's been, like, a constant thing since since that episode aired. And, like, here's the thing. I mean, that scene is, is one of my favorite scenes that we've done, and I get why people like it. But it was, like, from, like, the very first picture I posted with my, you know, now fiancé, uh someone's been making that joke and it was like the first time it was like ha 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 okay i get it that's funny my character said that but this is like this is my my life separate from that this is my fiance who's not an actress who's not a public person this is you know just a sweet gal who's uh you know willing to uh, put up with me and uh it's like could we not do that? And, you know, I'd asked before, and I've gone on statement and be like, like, I get it. I love that you love the episode. I get it. But that's just not an appropriate thing to say to to someone that you don't know. And, 
uh, it did. It's gotten to the point where it's just like, I'm, I'm done with this. Like, it's just classless at this point. Like, you know, I get it. You like my show, but leave my fucking woman alone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, it's it's like Rick James. Bitch. Yeah, that's like, what I was going to say. Yeah. Like uh, Chappelle told this story uh, right before he fucking peaced out to Africa, actually, where he would just be out with his family, like his wife and two little at the time, they were little kids. And somebody would just walk up to him and get right in his face like, hey, I'm Rick James, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then get closer. I'm Rick James, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, over, over and over and over probably again. Probably not the best thing. Yeah, but when you're on a show this successful, you're going to get that. I know it probably sucks, though, uh, with you and your lady. Um, what's, what are some of the other things that the, the, the fans stop you in the street and quote to you? I mean, the, the, the other one that I get the most is, you know, that's what I appreciate about you. And, that, that, you know, that's a lovely one. There's, there's no way where that could be taken wrong. Like, if you got to quote something from the show, at least quote something that's... Uh, you know, not going to make my fiance's family go, oh, this again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. At some point, you're going to have to actually marry that woman and, and the parents are going to be involved in that whole process. So probably best yeah. to at least keep it on the level until then. Right. So they can pay because they pay for the wedding and shit. So, you know. yeah. 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 They're going to have to throw down for that wedding. Yeah. Um, how many how many seasons do you think this will go? I mean, look, tra Trailer Park Boys, I feel like has been on for 20 years at this point. I don't see any signs of you guys slowing down anytime soon. Have they talked about it? You know, um, I, we're, we're coming up. We have two more uh, seasons on the current episode order that we're delivering. So uh, we're going back to work in May for on two blocks. And, uh, you know, after that, we'll be, uh, you know, renegotiating, I guess, hoping for a renewal. And, uh, you know, I, this is a show that, frankly, at the pace that we do it, we can keep doing it as long as uh, as long as Jared wants to, and I know for a fact uh, that Jared would be quite happy doing this for the rest of his life. He has often told me, uh, feel if, if his only job for the rest of his career is writing and making Letter Kenny, he'd be quite happy. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that either he's going to get tired of doing it, or eventually they're going to think we don't uh, we're not profitable enough. But uh, Till then, we're going to keep trying to make more episodes. Anybody, yeah. anybody that's cranking out content like that, I'm not. I'm. I, I, don't worry about profits. Yeah. Uh, if you can draw any eyeballs at all right now, uh, it, it's good. And yeah. I, look, it's the same as it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I mean, I think they're on. You know what? Season 15. Right. It's now? the longest running live action sitcom in history. Yeah, and it's they're going to continue America, as well. Yeah. Like they all had. I feel like they all they had their uh, their Beatles moment. I don't think it was tumult between the cast members. They just all wanted to do other shit. You know what I mean? And they all did it. And they still did the show. And now they realize they could do both. And they're like, fuck it. We're just going to do it. I mean, if I were them, I would do 30. I would go Simpsons style and do this forever. Same, man. And look, they signed I mean, on for three more. They're, so. Yeah, they're, they're already so, I mean, there, there's so many episodes in. They're past syndication. It's been syndicated already. So it's not like they're going to make that much more money. And they also have, all of them have creator credits as well. All the, yeah, three, yeah. the three guys have creator credits. Yeah. It's uh. And I don't. The, I don't, the one is married you, to uh, D, so it's yeah, like, so she's good she's too. She's good too. The only one not getting creator credits is Danny DeVito. But let's be real, he played the Penguin. He doesn't need shit from anybody. He owns the production company. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. true. He does actually, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, who are you a fan of comedically? Like, what do you watch these days that you're like, shit, man? That that show's doing it right, or this other guy's doing it right, or I wish I could be on this show. I uh, I've been watching um, actually. But just watching Auntie Donna, and it's funny because I remember those guys from uh, Just for Laughs. But uh, the, I, I was in a sketch troupe for years, and we, we came up with a really weird show. And then uh, you're like, no, there's no way anyone's going to go for this. And then seeing Auntie Donna, it's like, oh, man, we should have really actually tried to pitch that because it turns out people will go for it. Um, what was the... Uh, I've been I've been actually catching up on Shit's Creek, which I didn't watch for its whole run because we were in direct competition with them. It felt like up here, and uh, I, I finally sat down and watched that, and I was like, "Oh wow, okay, they deserved uh, to get those awards they beat us out for." Yeah, yeah. that's I, and I'll tell you what, man, it's funny you said that. So it just came to Netflix. It was on a, a channel called Pop down here in the United States. Pop really wasn't a thing. Uh, most of the channels were in an SD, like standard definition. So it was hard. Um, and you would hear about this show, Shit's Creek. And obviously we know the whole cast from Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show and all those guys. Um, and 
when it came on Netflix about two or three months ago, um, you know, people were in for the holidays and all that stuff. And I was like, it had just won like every Emmy there was uh, in September. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm in. I'll give this a shot. But how good can this be a show from pop TV? And now I'm hooked on it as well. And I was like, I said the same thing. I was like, oh, shit. No wonder what they won all these awards. Like, this is yeah. fucking great. <laughs> yeah. In, in Canada, I think, Catherine won for best comedic actress every year it was on. And, uh, you know, I mean, she's, she's a national treasure up here. She could, you know, rob a bank and we just let her do it. Uh, and so, and then like actually watching the performance, it was like, my God, she's talented. And, uh, I met Dan, you know, a million years ago, mm -hmm. uh, standing out on young street and, uh, he was a nice guy then. And I'm happy for, uh, for his success. And, uh, he, then Noah Reed, him and I actually worked together on a movie score, the hockey musical. Uh, he went to high school with my sister. Like I've uh, known Noah for a hundred years and he's a really great kid. So tremendous to see them all uh, have their success. And then every once in a while, Lisa Codrington from our show shows up on Shit's Creek. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, it's, uh, look, that, that show's a blast. I'm, I'm gassing through it now. Um, and, and I'm a gigantic fan. I feel like all you <clears throat> Canadian comedians know each other. Um, is it because of the population and how small it is, or is the comedy circle that small up there in Canada? Uh, it's a little bit of both. I mean, it's uh, when you end up like the people who work in Canada work often. Like the the people like them, so they uh, they bring them back. And uh, actually, the Joe Seth joke Seth Rogan had when we met at Rose Battles. Uh, was everyone has worked with Jay Baruchel at least once in Canada. <laughs> That's true. That is absolutely true. And I've actually worked with Jay four times. So uh, <laughs> if you funny. if you're in Hollywood and in comedy and you're under uh, I guess fifty now and you haven't worked with Baruchel, you probably have missed out on a lot of opportunities, right? Because that dude's in everything. Everything. He's one of Apatow's guys. Yeah. Uh, he's in all of the things. I feel like. Uh, but yeah, it, it feels like all of you guys know each other. Growing up. Um, did you have a sense of like American comics or were you more towards the kid, the, the Canadian oh, comics, no, like, have, like Jim, Jim Carrey and those stuff. guys? Yeah, mm. no, we have all of your shows up here. So, uh, you know, we grew up on everything American and everything Canadian. Mm. So like, yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up on SNL and, uh, SCTV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we had it, uh, we had it both, you know, we had kids in the hall up here, but we also had in living color. So, uh, we, we watched it all. Like uh, a lot of my favorite comics were growing up were American. Like, uh, George Carlin is probably one of my big influences. Started my love affair with making fun of language. And uh, um, Eddie Murphy. I used to memorize Eddie Murphy routines when I was a kid. Uh, Ron Delirious were two of my favorite stand up specials. And uh, I think Brian Regan is uh, mm. probably the best quintessential stand-up you can get yeah uh, he, he's he is very everybody is, loves him brian regan you know? is like he can walk into a room of i've i've actually saw him at a theater in in madison wisconsin i think there was twelve thousand people there which is mid-size mm -hmm. like he's, it's not an amphitheater but they don't have one there unless you go to the football stadium right so it's the biggest place that was there man uh uh he didn't swear once and everybody was gut laughing the whole time. That to me is very impressive. Yeah, because I don't like clean comedians. Like, not I not much. Even me, dude. Like, I can't. I mean, I, it's I, him I and Gaffigan, a, right? Well, Gaff Gaffigan and his and his like, if you go to a small show and see him, he's going to talk a lot of shit. Yeah. But if one of his big specials, he doesn't really swear that much. No, it's only those two guys. He doesn't swear. Um, but like for me, like Seinfeld, like I just can't get down on that type of humor because it's not my bag. Um. But yeah, Brian Regan, he's the only one I think that's clean pretty much. And Gaffigan, that, that's about it. Uh, I can't think of anybody else. Sebastian. I, I remember the, seeing Regan getting interviewed, and it was like it wasn't even an intentional decision to be clean. He's just not really that dirty mm. in real life. And none of the stuff that interests him required swearing. So right. he just, one day he's like, well, I guess I am pretty clean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but it's uh, that's the thing with with everything, with music, with comedy, with with uh, with acting, with politics. Authenticity is key. If people feel like you're if you're you're trying to live some false life for the purpose of making money or clout or power or whatever, they're going to dislike you. People hate that shit. Yeah. Anytime people see a climber, they're like, oh, God, this guy again. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. wants to see that shit. 
And that's a good lesson for any of you out there that are trying to get into the industry. Just be yourself and it'll either work out or it won't. But it definitely won't work out if you try to be somebody you're not. Or use your vagina, you know, if you're a woman. Um, or Kirill Car had a great quote the other day on his, his Instagram. He goes, you ever just look around the house and just say, my vagina paid for all of this stuff here. Like, it got me everywhere here. Hey, look, it's, that's, uh, that's market capitalism right there, man. It is. It is. Big fan of that. Uh, and use what you got, and brother. And it's true. We never choose a terrible vagina as a wife. Like, you know, not one, at one point where you're like, eh, man. I, I don't know. I would choose a terrible vagina. Yes, dude, you'll choose other shit. Like, if she's not doing dishes or whatever, and you're like, but she's got a great vagina, and you'd be like, well, I can look past that. I could cook my own meals, you know, things uh, like that. Yeah, I mean, women probably do more than, than fucking cook, but I see where you're going with no, that. No, 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 no. But, like, long term, right? Uh, dude wise, most everybody wants, like, a good chef and things like that for I, you're I do about the long cooking, term for I your do kids. the cooking in my house, but yeah, you're probably, most dudes don't, aren't like, very good at cooking no dude are, are you good at cooking like how did you how did you and your found send me uh she saw me doing she actually saw me opening for ron funches oh with, shit uh, jfl 42 a few years ago and uh she started stalking me on the internet uh she always gets mad at me when i say that <laughs> <laughs> well we'll clip this and send it to her don't worry yeah it'll yeah. be fine <laughs> so she, she sent me uh sent me a bunch of messages and uh i finally saw one and uh, she like spam liked all my photos and I checked out her profile and uh, we started chatting and uh, you know, she asked me out and we hit it off. Uh, just uh, you know, one of those old fashioned love stories. Yeah, <laughs> man meets woman, woman off the internet, internet stalks the man on the internet yeah. and then wears his skin later on in life. Is, she, is she a good cook? She, you know, she is a good cook, but actually, I was a. I worked in kitchens mm. professionally for ten years, so uh, uh, a lot of the times I'm in there just out of mm. work, so I have it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. What, what what kind of stuff? Do you, what kind of stuff do you like to cook? Are you like a barbecue guy, or are you like an actual cook guy? Well, I mean, unfortunately, my condo doesn't lend itself to a lot of successful barbecue. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I got a pretty mean stir fry. I uh, got some. Uh, some fierce uh, chicken dishes I cook up and uh, do a nice goat cheese stuffed chicken breast. Uh, that's that's a popular one in the house. There you I'm go. getting I'm getting a little hard. Yeah, Dan. Look, Dan's a big Amazon recipe. Guy. Yeah, I cook yeah. a lot. I've got a. I actually sous vide four steaks and two pieces of king salmon this morning before I came into. Did work. you really? Yeah. I didn't eat all of it. Obviously, it's for later. But I enjoy. I like cooking. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's something to do. Yeah. Uh, you're one of those guys too that, that you could fit into any American movie is like the like the redneck down here. Um, I, oh I, man, all of my auditions for American movies are like racist sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it, dude. You got to know who you are, though. People always say like uh, like a, a woman will compliment me on my looks or something like that. I'm like, I know what I look like. I look like I just stumbled out of a militia camp in the woods. Okay, we don't need to pretend here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, I, let's just be real. I got a ginger beard. My, I mean, I got blue eyes. That's nice. But I look angry all the time. Come on. You don't have to fucking fluff me up. The two of you guys look like you stormed the Capitol a week ago. <laughs> uh, um, and that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The beauty of it is, I will say this, like in Hollywood with like all those castings and shit, they're never ending. And since every, you know, everything's going to be super diverse in the future, they're always going to need a racist cop or a racist neighbor. You might work forever because of that, where it's just like, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody's got to be the dickhead in the movie. Somebody, somebody, look, yeah. somebody's going to be the dickhead. And it can, it can turn into something else for you, too. Uh, uh, so our, our buddy AJ Buckley was on in, uh, NCIS New York forever, right? Yeah. Like 10 yeah. seasons or years some shit. Years, but then years. he went, the, the next couple of roles he did, one of them, one of the most, uh, uh, not prestigious, but one of the ones that's so more memorable is the one he did on Justified, right? Mm -hmm. Where he plays a hillbilly. Yep. And that hillbilly accent kind of turned him into a Texan on SEAL team. Yeah. So he, you know, he graduated to an actual yeah. human. And then you, become, work out. then you become that character. Yeah. Um, do you, <laughs> you, for real, like I, everybody says, if you play the same roles long enough, you actually just become that guy. And like, you are the badass. Like Kevin Costner is becoming his character in Yellowstone right now. He's been murdering people all over the country. Yeah. I, he's super, <laughs> he's leaning into the Western theme. Like all of his shit is Western, yeah. even though he lives on a beach in, in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Uh, and that's a true story. Yeah. But like, I remember Ron Perlman back in the day. This is an odd one. 
uh, who he ended up playing Hellboy, but he was on uh, Sons of Anarchy yeah. for years and years and years, right? And well, in real life, he's kind of a liberal pussy. Yeah, yes. Well, I, he was. He was. And so that's when I knew him. And yeah. then once he got Sons of Anarchy, we went out to like a karaoke bar one night and he showed up on a motorcycle and was like wearing a lot, like a lot of leather and shit like that. And I was like, oh, fuck. You're really living this life now and you've become this guy, uh, this kind of gruff, like a uh, you know, tough guy type of dude. And it's just like, but why not? Eh, why not? Yes, do that? I know. But you it, know you, I mean? you, that show went for years and years. You eventually become that. Like, <coughs> you know, you might eventually just you have, become you have to learn how to ride a bike. On... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny. One of our former co-hosts, yeah. uh, Rocco Vincent Vargas, he is on the spinoff show, um, yeah, Mayans. the Mayans right now. And that, that was his biggest thing. Like, Dude, he was like, holy shit, I don't know how to write a book. Seriously, he got the part, and then he was like scrambling. He got onto our private group on Facebook. Like he said, he's like 110,000 people. He's like, hey, does anybody know how to ride a motorcycle that could teach me how to ride? Because I've got like three weeks to fucking learn this shit. Yeah, so he ended up, uh, you know, taking courses. Yeah. And Oddly enough, it wasn't part of their, it wasn't part of the, of, of Sutter's production company's process to teach them how to, you would think that, or not to teach them, but to like, hey, you guys, you know how to ride, right? Or maybe it was, and he was just like, yeah, I fucking know how to ride. Yeah, that's Fuck. exactly what happened. That's I, dude, funny. it happened to me once, man, because as an actor, they tell you, you know, they're like, hey, man, can you do this? No matter what they say, you always say, yes, I can definitely do that. And then knowing in the back of your mind, you're like, all right, shit, I got to go and fucking learn that. I got fired from a movie for saying that I could surf. <laughs> um, and then I showed up for call time, you know, super early in the morning, uh, out in, out in Malibu and they're like, great. Um, so we're going to need you to get on that board and go out into the ocean. It was a beach boys movie for ABC. It was like a biopic for them. And, uh, and it was a long board, you know, and it's super simple, like surfing, but I've never surfed before in my life. I go out, I paddle out, you know, and I try to hop up there or whatever. And I'm just thinking they just need like B roll footage of like paddling out and shit like that. No, they wanted me to ride the surfboard, and uh, once they found out that I couldn't, uh, the did, the, the, the did jig, you tell the them or did you up. try? I, I tried, and then you just fucked it up. Oh like, dude, god, is was, there is where's the where's the footage of this? It shit? It was so awful. That, that would be I, gold. I would I would pay for that. I'd pay ten thousand dollars for that footage right now. I walked back onto the shore with this fucking huge longboard, and I just went up to the the director, and I was like, "I'm I'm sorry, man. I I lied, and I can't surf. Uh, I'm terrible at this, and uh, I'm just gonna grab my belongings and go home." Um, and they had to call somebody at a, you know, central casting or whatever to, to replace it. But, um, it's one of those things where you always go with the lie and then try to figure it out later. Surfing isn't one of those things. Riding a motorcycle though, you could do it. Yeah, it's easily. relative. Yeah. It's yeah. like a bike, just heavier. Yeah. I mean, I, you, I got cast as a biker and, uh, for a show and I don't, I don't ride and it didn't really come up until like the table read. And, uh, and then someone was like, almost as an afterthought, they're like, Oh, uh, do you ride? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, so we're going to need to get a stunt rider for you? And I was like, yeah, probably. And, uh, and then that was the only conversation we really had about it. <laughs> Did they hire the stunt uh, driver for you? Uh, it turned out the, the guy that they had uh, on set, who was like in charge of the bikes, uh, pretty much looked like me. So they just put him on the motorcycle in my costume. Uh, oh. for, for any distant shots and then close-ups i just climbed on the bike and held it in place you son of a bitch you got lucky yeah I, they were doing close-ups of like surfing and shit and uh dude it was off i mean i was it was horrific it was like a fucking child it was like a, a paraplegic on a fucking surfboard dude i just i was everywhere i was in the water at one point like i'm waving uh the board had hit me it was ugh, it was a fucking nightmare um, I see Captain America poster behind you there. Uh, is that a is that a, is that a dream for you one day to do one of those movies? Oh man, I'd love to be uh, in a, a Marvel flick. Uh, even if I'm blown up in an opening scene, I'd be quite happy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up a comic book nerd, so who wouldn't want to uh, exist in the Marvel or DC <laughs> extended universe? Uh, I, I think I could play a good Detective Bullock in the next Batman. Uh, reboot, which they're probably going to do because gee, that's printing money. Who? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, who it's, played it's, him in Gotham? It's uh, hold on. Uh, what is it? Donald Logue. Donald Logue. Yeah, Donald Logue, he's, yeah, he's a great actor. Yeah. Ah, but, shit! You look like Donald Logue's brother, kind of, dude. He, yeah, yeah, uh, right. I could pull it off. You look. You actually look more like the uh, comic book character than he does. I think, frankly, the comic book character <laughs> was a, uh, a, a 
larger man. And yeah, Don yeah, Logan's yeah. not. No, he's not. He's not a good. He's not a big a big dude. He's not. But they just they just redid Batman. They got the emo Batman now with uh, Robert Pattinson as yeah, Batman. Yeah. And then Colin Farrell's playing the Penguin, but you can't tell that it's Colin Farrell. It's a strange one, man. I know they've pushed it for COVID, so it's going to be a while. But I saw the opening trailer they released online. I can't get behind that shit. I don't know where you're you're at with that. There's so many roles for fat dwarves out there. And <laughs> I just think it's really mean to give that part to, to Colin when there's an, a, a portly uh, man of a reduced stature somewhere that really needs the work. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not a you know a huge petition online of like it's you you, you should really get overweight people to play the overweight people and all the other stuff because that's next that's coming yeah but when I saw the trailer I actually thought it was Richard Kind um, I did not know it was Colin Farrell and then somebody had to freeze I'd love to see Richard Kind as the Penguin that would be amazing it looks like him if you put that if you slow down that trailer and freeze frame the Penguin it looks like Richard Kind he's got the face for it. Yeah, Colin Farrell does not have the face to play Penguin, and that's probably a compliment to Colin Farrell, and a, and not a compliment. He's to a Richard great Kine. looking man. Yeah, in but real life. Richard Kind looks like the fucking Penguin. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah. He doesn't even need the uh, nose appliance, probably. No. Maybe a little bit, but not not like. Come on, not a lot. Uh, yeah, fuck. If there's anybody born to play the Penguin, it was Richard Kind. Well, it was Christ Danny sakes. DeVito. Let's be real. Well, both 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 were equally great, in my opinion. Um, has there been one recently that you were just like, man, I can't get behind that? <laughs> Uh, I, I still haven't seen all of the DC ones. I haven't seen Aquaman or Justice League yet. And uh, there's almost too much complaining going back and forth about Justice League, uh, which cut is the right cut and all that. And uh, I still haven't seen Wonder Woman 84, which hasn't been getting the best reviews. Right. Uh, uh, but, uh, I'm looking forward to checking out um, WandaVision. That looks trippy as hell. You know, uh, I, yeah, I haven't seen that trailer yet. I've I've seen the teasers though for the uh, uh, the Zack Snyder cut where it's, it's going to be like four and a half hours of the the Justice League movie. Um, they keep teasing that, and I guess Batman drops the f bomb in it, which is Affleck in that movie. Um, that's just Affleck in real life. That guy curses like a sailor, like us. So, uh, were you stoked on <laughs> Affleck as, as Batman? <laughs> I had no problems with Affleck as Batman. You know, he's he's uh, he's got the look. He yeah. uh, he looks like he could be a millionaire who sneaks out of his house to fight crime. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and he's uh, you know he's he's at the right age too to play kind of a senior superhero. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he's uh, you know and, we, we still think of him as, as Goodwill Hunting, but that was a long time. Right, ago. right. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, now he just sneaks out of his house to to buy drugs and smoke cigarettes. I think. Correct. Um, Correct. And he just broke up with his girlfriend a couple days ago. Oh, so he's on the he's off the wagon. Ben, I don't know. Ben's gonna be back. On, I like party Ben. I'm a mm -hmm. huge Affleck guy on drugs and alcohol. The other shit I just don't get behind. When Affleck is really raging his hardest, like full cocaine, full bender. That is my favorite Affleck. Everyone knows that about me. I fucking love. That Ben Affleck banging playmates, then crawling over to Jennifer Garner's house to have uh, her drive him to Jack in the Box at 3 a.m. like to beat these fucking hangovers, uh, gambling all night in Vegas. I love that Affleck. Um, like, you know, then you see like fucking Pattinson take over for Batman, and he refused to work out because he said he didn't want you know to leave a stigma for people to feel like they had to work out to play. Batman, which is a superhero, and it was just like, bro, fuck off with all that shit. Yeah, you know? I mean, you couldn't, you can't, you're never going to be able to top Christian Bale and then Ben Affleck because they are two very waspy. They're 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 Bruce Wayne. Both yeah. both of those guys in real life are Bruce Wayne. You know what I mean? They, yeah, they're not yeah. they're not billionaires, but if they were billionaires, that'd be at the end of it. So I, I the Pattinson thing I don't see, but pr from what I understand. His acting is very, very good in this in this film. Don't give a shit. That's what I've heard. Yep. Don't care. Uh, he's got a weird look to me. He, I know. I look. I know the Twilight thing. He's a guy who always looks like he has permanent fangs. It's just a weird smile where he's got fangs, and I'm like, man, that fucking Twilight shit ended years ago. You still have that smile. I heard a rumor that Michael Keaton was coming back to play Batman. Did you hear that? Yeah, I've heard that going forward uh, after the Pattinson thing. Uh, 
Michael Keaton sort of stepping into what Ben Affleck was going to be doing in the extended universe. And he's just Batman, the first superhero uh, going forward. Right. And there's a, uh, there, you, you're, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just said playing old man Batman. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's that, there's that I'm sure you're familiar with. And uh, our, one of our producers, Giorgio for sure is uh, there was the old, uh, not old, I guess. I think it was in the 90s, the comic series where Batman got old and he was training his replacement and all that bullshit. And they actually made a cartoon about it at some point. Yeah, about Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond, that's it, yeah. That was a great... I mean, the I didn't. I never watched the cartoon, but the comics were really fucking good from that. So who, the question is, who's the next guy? Who are they going to pick to be the fucking 22-year-old or whatever the fuck it is, right? Well, um, it's going to be it's gonna be Pattinson for a while, obviously, unless that movie tanks, but... No, no, no. He that's a different that's a different spinoff. Like oh, this oh, this would be oh, Michael gotcha, gotcha, this would be gotcha. Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne, and he's now what in his late fifties, I think, when that's when that started. So he's in his late fifties, and he is still doing Intel stuff. He's a little bit off the grid, but right. he, he's obviously can't do what he used to do. And then he just by chance, I'm not going to spoil it for everybody in case they actually make the series or the the movies, but he actually runs into this kid that ends up becoming the Batman over time, right? Gotcha. So I don't know who you cast for that. Maybe it's... Gotta go trans. It can't be... Uh, like, who, who are the really, really good standout young actors right now that could do action shit? Because I'm not seeing them. You have to go trans now in Hollywood. So no matter what, they're going to have to put the, tra the first trans superhero in there. Um, that's going to be a thing that's going to come down the pipeline where they're like, oh, who's it going to be? We should, we should throw a trans in there. So it, it might be something off, like super off the deep end where you're like, all right, shit, fuck. I guess that's what it is. It's got to be somebody who's... Uh, a Chinese Batman? Like Tom Holland was perfect for Spider-Man. He's unassuming. He's got the quick voice. He's nervous. Kind of like Michael Cera back in the day, that same kind of yeah, presence. He's just playing himself. But he's also a really good looking kid, great actor, and he's uh, pretty athletic, right? You got to find somebody like that, but the DC version, which is dark. Yeah, I look for the and they're pro they probably will choose a person of color for this. You would think in today's world, right? Who fucking knows? Uh, me personally, like you know, you used <clears throat> to have teen movies and like uh, teen soap opera, you know, dramas and all that shit, like One Tree Hill and things like that. They don't have any of those sexy, fun things anymore. I mean, Netflix, I guess, has uh, Outer Banks, so maybe one of those kids they'll put a little Batman costume. I wonder on him. what about John Boyega from uh, Star Wars. <sighs> Boy, he's, he's, a, he's 28 now, so that might be a little long in the tooth to play this particular character, but he's, he's a really good actor. bitched about Star Wars so much openly that I, 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 don't, I don't know if he's going to be able to get cast in a Is lot of Is he making shit. a name for himself as a dick? Yes. Well, <laughs> just to been talking shit about Star Wars, like mm. he's said you know, a million times, they gave him nothing to work with in Star Wars and all this other yeah. shit, and it's like, Nothing hey, to man. work with. It's fucking Star Wars. Exactly. Bro. That's not that's somebody else's gig. What about Star Wars? Are you a Star Wars guy? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. Uh, Nick Jonas is another guy that could play that young Batman role, by the way. He's a pretty good guy. Have you seen uh, The Kingdom or whatever the fuck it You're is? You're talking about the Jonas Brothers? Yeah. Ugh, I, have you watched? Go watch an episode of The Kingdom. Watch him act and then get back to I me. I won't. I won't. I, I want the bonus Jonas in things. He doesn't get enough credit. He's uh, I don't even know who that is. Beautiful little twink. Um, and, and, you know, he doesn't get enough coverage. Let's throw the bonus Jonas in there. Um, oh, I hope it's not, I hope it's not Jaden Smith. No, no, it's not James right. Smith. Well, you never know. Shit. He was the karate kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was a child then, but this is like a... This, I'll have to look it up and see what this character's age is. I think it was like 20 or, eight or something like that. Because anyway. you know what's going to happen with Letterkenny one day is, is uh, you know, you guys will be 10 years off the air and then they'll remake it with other people who look similar to you or a different cast. Um, no, they're already like... Uh, I think the, there's a, a French version in the works. That's really funny. Uh, Isn't really? French Everybody's... Canada. And uh, so, uh, so, yeah, they've already started, like, uh, uh, finding our, our doppelgangers of, uh, of different ethnic origins as we go international. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> who, who's the creators? Who got the creator credit on this show? Uh, uh, Jared and, uh, and Jacob. So, Jared, they get the money for that, by the way. So, no matter how many times they remake that shit around the world, that, uh, that cheddar comes to them. Even, um, shit, who, who did the original Office? Uh, Gervais. That was Ricky Gervais Ricky, Ricky and Stephen Gervais. Merchant. Yes. Uh, and I remember Ricky Gervais doing an interview saying, I hope the American version of The Office goes for 50 years mm. because I get an EP credit and I get the creator credit and all of that money goes right into my wallet. And I think they ended up remaking The Office in like 40 different countries. Um, yeah, it's one of the most remade shows, I think. I mean, that's how Rogan got rich 
fucking Fear Factor got made and remade yeah. in every single place. And mm-hmm. I think in his third or fourth season, he got it. He ended up getting creator credit. Yeah, he got a, man, a, a, an EP that credit was a, on that. Yeah. That was the best decision he ever made is to forego cash for that EP credit because he made so much fucking money oh, off that boy. shit. As if Rogan He's still making money, money on it. Yeah, yeah, still making money off Fear. Fear Factors, they just remade it for MTV. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. Is it Ludacris hosting it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Luda, Luda. Uh, is hosting that shit right now. now they, that's what they're doing with anything. Anything successful, they'll just remake it. Would you ever go over to France and be in that version? Oh, you want to do a cameo, right? I, yeah. I'd have to learn French, but if, if the money's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, shit. That'd be a blast to go over to France and do that. Have you been to France? I have not. I haven't uh, I haven't crossed the pond yet for any reason. Uh, man, when COVID's over, dude, you can really eat and drink your face off over there, and it is a blast. Um, right now, you know, with all the shit that's going on, it probably wouldn't be worth it, but hopefully later on down the road it will be. My, my uh, gal's actually got her Irish passport, so uh, we do have plans of heading to Ireland at some point when this is all fixed. But uh, <laughs> uh, it looks great, doesn't it? I've never been to Ireland, but it, it looks awesome, man. I, I like shit. I'd love just to go over there and sit in a pub and all that shit. People say the same thing all the time. They're like, oh, it's super cold or the weather's bad. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'll be sitting fuck. on a bar anyways. Yeah. yeah. What am I going to be standing outside? Yeah. Complaining it can't about it. be colder world. than Canada. So. No, that's true. Yeah. You live up in, uh, you live in, uh, what, do you, what do they call it? Middle Earth or some shit? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you at? Where do you live at up there? I'm in Toronto. Oh, you're mm. in Toronto, the six. Uh, how yeah. big, how big is Drake really up there? Is that is the hype real? Like, do the Drake owns the city? <clears throat> I mean, maybe for the younger generation. Like, I, I met Drake when he was still on Degrassi. I used mm. to do. You met wheelchair Jimmy? Do, yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to do loop groups uh, for Degrassi, so I'd come in and record like background chatter and an extra mm. voiceover that they needed for uh, episodic sounds. So I'd be like the voice on the loudspeaker at a hockey game or a, an off-camera cop or a teacher in the hallway, like just weird stuff like that. And uh, sometimes the as I'd be leaving, the uh, regular cast would be coming in to do ADR. So I met, I met Drake uh, back before he was Drake one day, just coming out of a recording session. And yeah, so for me, he was, he was like, you know, oh, it's, it's cool. The kid from uh, Degrassi grew up and made something of himself. Good for him. But, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm proud of the guy, but for most of us, it's not like his word is, you know, you know law. Like a lot of us <laughs> really annoyed with him branding us the six. We didn't want that. But we we got to live with it now. Like uh, some of us wanted to just sit down and enjoy the basketball game. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny you said that, dude, because every, we're in America. We just think, oh, yeah, it's the six. It's Toronto. No. You know, it's, the- it's, he's at the Raptors games. No, the wor- standing no- up, hugging people. The, the worst acting that Drake's ever done, and this is saying something, uh, was when he threw a little fit after uh, KD got hurt yeah. in, that, in the finals. He was like, oh, no, man, no, no come on. Like, come on, shut up, dude. Your team just won the finals. Shut yeah, up. They like won you, the championship. Him going down just won you the championship. Get out of here. Wheelchair Jimmy, dude. Yeah, I'm just a big fan of wheelchairs. That's why I like Degrassi. Same. That's great. <laughs> Degrassi was one of those shows, man. That was one of the first ones to hit America that was like, holy shit. Yeah. And that was like... Because it started out here as Degra- the kids of Degrassi Street, mm-hmm. and then it became Degrassi Junior High, and then Degrassi High, and then it, it ended. And so that, that was already like a historically long run where we watched some of the characters from like, you know, middle school all the way to graduating high school. And then it came back as Degrassi, the next generation. And then that show ran for like almost two full turnovers. Yeah, they've been yeah. milking the shit out of Degrassi. I know Kevin Smith is a gigantic fan of Degrassi. I think he yeah, went he up. Came up and he he guest starred in two episodes. Yeah, hmm. yeah, he guest starred in a couple well, episodes, and yeah, I missed the wheelchair Jimmy days. I caught the iteration after that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fun. I love the uh, the crawl show when they would do uh, Wheels Ontario. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the fake Degrassi show that. Yeah. Uh, that uh, they would do on that. We, uh, Kent has got a pretty good sense of humor for when people make fun of our shit. Like we love all the, uh, Canada episodes of South park up here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, wheels Ontario. That's, that's one that we quote sometimes on the, on the letter Kenny set. We have, we have good, good laughs about that one. That's funny, man. Um, shit, dude. Uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> I haven't seen that in years. The fact that you just busted out. You really are like a gigantic comedy fan. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to be, right? You mm. Don't make this your life if you just kind of like it. Yeah, 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 for real. I, it's, it's, it's just so strange to me because it, I literally, besides your show, I, I can't name one other comedy I think I'm watching right now. Um, but Shit's Creek, mm. but that's I'm fucking late to the game on that, and I'm fine with admitting that, where I'm just like, all right, sweet. I'm catching that. After, I mean, they're over here. Like, that's done here, so I'm catching that late. But other than that, they're just, they just don't really do that shit down here. It's a lot of uh, three-camera sitcoms down here where it's like, you know, forced canned laughter and and all of that shit, like Last Man Standing or things like that, which is, you know, fine if you've got kids and everything. But I like the darker shit. Like, I'll still pop on Eric Andre's show um, to get real dark, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he, look, he's... He shaved his hair for this last season. Yeah, yeah. So was that for this season? Like, I, I don't know what the bold choice was. I don't know or if Rosario Dawson broke up with him and started dating Cory Booker. Like why he shaved his head but uh he went all in this this year and it's been super fucking dark and i've loved it uh, it's just it's every time i see him it's like is that is that eric <laughs> yeah yeah i did i i didn't i, I look like jeff ross yeah, yeah exactly exactly i had dinner with that guy one night and he was totally normal and tame and calm and i was like Man, how do you do all this fucked up shit like all the time? Like I thought he would have been checked out, but uh, decent dude, man. And I, I still love that show. But that's kind of it, because I mean, down here, Comedy Central is no longer doing live action shows. Um, they switched to all animation uh, starting j shit January first. Um, Adult Swim has mostly veered toward animation, and uh, FX said, you know, hey man, I, we don't. We don't know how much comedy we're going to do here anymore yeah. either. I mean, so. even the studios, uh, the major studios are, are like, uh, you, you talked about Wonder Woman 1984. They spent, what, 200 some million dollars on that and yeah. they just sent it to HBO, HBO. Max. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's straight to HBO. Yeah. I, I don't know great. where it's headed, but you're in, look, you're in great shape, man. You're on one of the funniest shows on television. Yeah. You guys is... have already, you're already in the model and have already monetized in the model that everybody has to move to now, so you guys are fucking set. Yeah, you're gold, man, and your show's going to go for fucking 10, 12 mm -hmm. more seasons, so congratulations. Uh, I hope so. I want to buy a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're in, you're in Toronto. Your fucking housing prices there are ridiculous. Everything's ridiculous. Um, yeah. How, like, how much is like a 2,000-square-foot house there in Toronto? I'm, uh, I'm not sure. We were looking at houses yesterday and because uh, it's just a hobby of my gal. She likes to pull out the real estate listings. And it's like every other home we looked at was like $2.8 million, you know. Yeah. yeah for like That's... a four or three bedroom family home. Like... I did a gig in uh, Vancouver a few years back. And uh, the guy, my cab driver from the airport to the thing, was asking me to eat at these restaurants. Um, what's like the Canadian version of like Perkins? Um, oh, uh, uh, Smitty's. Yes. Yeah, it's like a two meat, two vegetable, or yeah, meat yeah, and two yeah, vegetable yeah. kind yeah. of restaurant, yeah. So he owned two of them, and as he was driving me to the hotel, he was like, oh, make sure to stop in Smitty's or whatever and, and, uh, and get some food. And I was like, oh, is it great? And he's like, well, I own them. Um, and I was like, oh, shit, you so, own, you not own really, it? Not really the question I ask. Y yeah, and he That's goes... <laughs> He didn't say whether the food was good. That's happen. a no, by the way. Yeah. That is a That's no. a hard no on that. That's yeah. a no for me, dog. But I go, hey, man, um, what's, the, what's the story then? Why are you driving a cab if you own two full restaurants? And he was like, well, I got to pay for my mortgage. And I was like, how much is your mortgage? And then he drove me by his house because it was on the way. And, and he was, oh, you see, see that house in the corner there? And I was like, yeah. It, was, it probably looked maybe between sixteen and 1,800 square feet. And he said, and this was five years ago, he said the house was, was $1.8 million. And I was like, fuck, are you kidding me? Wow. And he said all of the houses are like that there. What, what's, what's the story behind that? Uh, well, I mean, people wanted to live in the, the areas driving the prices up and also uh, people buying properties solely for use as uh, Airbnb mm -hmm. and short rental units has caused a chokehold on the market and uh, a lot of uh, foreign investors hiding money from their governments in 
foreign real estate. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask about that. Here, it's mostly Chinese investors that are buying. Like, I all live, of New York is empty. Yeah. yeah, I lived in uh, Oakland, California, what four years ago, and I lived there for about six or eight years. I don't remember seven years, seven years. Um, and my neighborhood, when I first moved in, pre- relatively normal. Then the housing market uh, started to get weird. And all of a sudden, any house that became vacant would get purchased immediately, 20% yep. over uh, market, and no one would live there. It was yeah. just like an empty house on the block now that some, someone owned. And we were like trying to figure out who it was, and it was all these Chinese holding companies. Yeah, you'll never see them. It'll be an LLC. I, I remember asking when I was in New York, um, <laughs> because I, I was in an empty high-rise like shooting this series for MTV, and we would walk in. I didn't see anybody but the doorman every single day, and I was like, hey, man. Forgive me, is it because I'm working weird hours? And he goes, no, there's only about four people that live in this high rise. And I was like, who are the rest of them? He goes, I don't even know their names. It's just an LLC with like numbers. So it's like 00154873. They never see the real buyers, nothing. Um, yeah, it's a weird sitch. And I always, I always wondered about Canada because the pricing of the houses, the housing market is so fucking crazy. I was like, who, who can afford that? Well, they've been they've been passing laws. I know out in BC they've been passing laws, um, forcing sale if, if unoccupied and stuff like that to to ease up on that or uh, having lots of penalty charges for owning properties that no one lives in and forcing the the market up. So they're they're trying whatever they can to to, to ease the problem without outright banning sales to LLCs. Shit. Uh, well, good luck with that, man. We, we, we hope you get a house soon here. Um, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? And it can, it, it can be a man or a woman, by the way. Uh, drinking bro of the, uh, of the week. Um, who's helped me get to where I am today? Hey, uh, let's say, uh, Jared Kisa without him, uh, and his wonderful TV show, I I wouldn't own property that I own. So that, <laughs> he's that. so time I ever met him, he handed me a, a bottle of Jameson and a mix CD of Letter Kenny songs and said, Welcome to Letter Kenny. And I said, You and I are gonna get along just fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, look, man, it is one of our favorite shows. Uh, please check it out. I believe it's on Hulu here now. Um, and you yep. can check out uh, mm-hmm. obviously the original episodes on youtube uh we greatly appreciate you being here tell everyone where they can find you on social media i'm the only k trevor wilson on the internet so at k trevor wilson uh on twitter and instagram and k trevor uh for shows when i'm allowed to have shows again and uh below the collar backslash dot com backslash k trevor wilson you want to buy t-shirts with my pretty face on it there you go a little merch a little merch for k trevor wilson uh, again, dude, an absolute joy, dude. I, Letter Kenny is one of the best shows uh, on television. Thanks for being here today. Uh, for oh, Kate, thanks. thanks for having me. Yeah, yes, yeah. Anytime, for Kate yeah. Trevor Wilson, Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone. <laughs>